Like finding a sense of confidence, confidence or being a better, like your better self. I thought you said continence, <laughs> like the ability to control your your, your bowel movements. Um, yeah. So there's so absolutely so being able to find your, a level of confidence within yourself. And we've talked about that before. How does one get confidence? It's a really common question that people will ask me. How do I, how do I become confident? What do I do to become confident? So practicing in what you're not confident. True. So uh, let's have uh, someone give me an example of something you want to be confident in. Anything doesn't matter. Roller skating. Roller skating. Okay. So some of us uh, have a really good reason to not be confident in roller skating. Is anybody in here roller skate? Is anybody here actively avoid roller skating for fear of your life? Okay. Good. Uh, I have a, a couple of former students who are roller skaters now. And they, they'll post things on Instagram all the time about they go out and the first couple of months are great because you see all kinds of falls, you know? And then you fast forward several months and they're doing all kinds of, of turns and spins and things. Um, so how is it that you become confident at roller skating? Well, first things first, you have to overcome that fear of trying to do it. Um, are you going to get hurt if you try roller skating? Yes. You have to absolutely get that in your head that you're going to get hurt doing it. You're probably going to get hurt doing a lot of things that you just start doing. Even if you decide that you're going to start, uh, start dieting, even, it's, there's going to be some pain involved with that. Because you're going to be hungry, you're going to go through you know, that, that physical stuff. Also the mental stuff as well. It's like, oh my god, it's the first day, and I'm already hungry. Why, oh my god, can I, I can't even do this. Um, yeah, it's, exa it's exactly like going in roller skating for the first time. You're going to fall down, you're going to get hurt, and you're going to be asking yourself, perhaps, is this even for me, really? You know? And uh, the answer is going to be yes, if you stick with it. If you stick with it, anything is for you. It doesn't matter what, what the thing is. In the case of roller skating, you're going to have to fall down lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of times. So the first thing is going to be to accept the fact that you're going to get hurt. And not just to accept it, but also perhaps to even embrace it. Because, so for example, um, going back to the, to the dieting example, if you find yourself on your first day and you're a bit hungry and it's bothering you, that's good because it should remind you, huh, that might mean that I've just been eating way too much in the past and this is just a reminder of what that is. Eventually your body will adjust and you will get used to eating better and less and, and all that, um, but it will take that time to do it. Um, as you're roller skating, if you can embrace the fact that you're going to fall, then you're going to be willing to take steps to, uh, to, to roller skate in ways that you otherwise would never have before, obviously. Um, this is also a long way of saying you have, to give your, you have to accept the fact that you're going to suffer, you have to embrace it, and then very importantly, <clears throat> sorry, you're going to have to get some wins under your belt. Meaning that if every time you stand up on the roller skates you fall, and then you fall, and you fall, and you fall, and you fall it's going to be very difficult to, to motivate yourself tomorrow. In fact, it may even be worse. You may end up breaking your arm or your leg or something. So you have to have some successes all along the way. A success can really just be that you're going to skate for 10 feet before you fall down. It's like, wow, 10 feet. Tomorrow, let me see if I can get 11 feet. And then tomorrow, if you, if you only get 5, that's a setback. So that means you have to come back the next day and make sure you get 10 feet, 12 feet, 20 feet, or whatever. Whatever it is in life that you want to build confidence in, that's how you do it. You have to have some small wins under your belt. Um, and it doesn't even necessarily have to be in that field, although it's very helpful if it's in that field. So for example, if you're struggling in school, one of the things that you can do, is, uh, advice I give is to, is to take control of a, a small area that is your life. For example, your bedroom, or wherever it is that you sleep. Even if you sleep in a living room, it's fine. You, you know, when you wake up in the morning, don't just grab your blankets and things and just toss them. Pick them up. Fold them. Oh, it doesn't matter. It does matter. It doesn't matter in terms of the blanket. You're not going to hurt the blanket's feelings. But it does matter in the sense that you're training yourself to be able to pay attention to the small things. Remember, one of, your, one of your best predictors of life is going to be your level of conscientiousness. How attentive are you to details? Do you let, do you, do you, do you let the little details go? That's not a good sign. Not a good sign because success is in the details. Anybody can do the big important things. 
you know? I mean, even think about, like, in terms of a relationship. Anybody in a relationship can, can remember a birthday or an anniversary. That's a lie. What's that? That's a lie. That's a lie? Yeah, I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> um, no, it's true, I'll stay with it. No, anybody can. If it's important to them. If it's important to them. Maybe it's just not important to him. Scott, you're starting an argument. I'm not starting an argument. I'm just saying some stuff. <laughs> because, I mean, think about other days that people remember. Do people remember when the Super Bowl is? No. Yeah? Even no. Like a it's not important to you. It's not important to you. But if it is important to you, you know, there are people who can tell you, you know, stats for a, a, a sports player. A uh, sports player, my God, that sounds terrible. Um, an athlete, a sports player, <laughs> up on the face page. Uh, anybody can, if, if someone you know, admires an athlete, they can tell you their statistics going back years. It's amazing what people can remember. You know? I mean, heck, some of you are fantastic at remembering what pictures your, your significant other liked on, on, on Instagram, especially if they belong to somebody else three or four years ago. You're fantastic at remembering those kinds of things. But think about the things that... that you know, aren't really super important to you. Um, anybody? I wonder, does anybody here not know your phone number? Your cell number? I just know mine. Just yours? Anybody, you know anybody else's? Some mom. Yeah, why, don't, why don't you memorize people's phone numbers? Because they're already saved. Yeah, they're already saved on your phone. It's not important information for you. The information itself is important, but it's taken care of for you. You know? Even then, um, is it difficult to put an anniversary date into a phone? remind you, you know, a couple days before or something. I don't know. But we don't really have any trouble remember, remembering the things that are that are important to us. Um, and that doesn't mean that we don't make mistakes on us, of course, but, you know, consider this. Anyway, um, anybody could remember anniversaries and birthdays. Maybe I'll, I'll take that part out of the video for you. Anybody can remember birthdays, anniversaries, <laughs> things like that, but it's the little things on the, uh, every day, the little day, the little things of appreciation. You know, those are the hard things to remember, to do, and yet those are the things that will form the foundation of a strong relationship. Um, getting a birthday card, easy. Getting a just or, or making a just because card, that's difficult. You know, saying thank you, um, opening doors for people, walking. You know, uh, whatever it is that, that that the other person appreciates, when you show them. Those little tiny things, man, those make the, all the difference in the world. And it's one of those things that we all intuitively know. Um, if your significant other does little nice things for you, we all kind of recognize those things and appreciate them. It's difficult to reciprocate, though. It's easy to receive those things. It's difficult to reciprocate. But that's where the strength of the relationship comes. It comes in the little, those little you know, acts of appreciation throughout to show that you appreciate the whole. You know, confidence in, a, in an area comes from having small victories in that. Anybody can get out there and do the big things, but if you do the little things right, big good things happen. If you do the little things wrong, big terrible things happen. It goes to the field. So this is how it is that you gain confidence. If you, if you haven't had little victories, um, it, it shouldn't be a surprise that you lack confidence. That makes sense. If you've never done anything in, in, uh, in school, for example, except for fail, well then, yeah, I mean, it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't make any sense to suddenly be confident. Now, having said that, some people are still magnificently um, uh, comfortable, I'm sorry, confident, despite the fact that they haven't had successes. But we all recognize who some of those people are, and we roll our eyes at them. We know how they, who they are, and we know how they are, sorry. Um, but if you're going to have some kind of a, of a turnaround in your life, you've got to give yourself some reasons to believe in yourself. That doesn't mean like, Okay, so I'm going to get a, an A on my chemistry test tomorrow. No, it, that's a big thing, man. How about starting off small? Read half of a chapter from your chemistry book. That's really hard. Okay, read a quarter of a, page, uh, a, quarter of a chapter. You're still going to fail tomorrow. But now you've proven to yourself that you can read a quarter of a page. I'm sorry, a quarter of a chapter. And if you've proven that you can do that, perhaps you can prove to yourself that you can read a whole chapter. You know, if you're a terrible runner, don't go out there and try to run a marathon. Run a quarter mile first. Prove to yourself that you can do that. Because all a marathon is is, is 26 miles times four quarters. And if, you can do, if you can do that quarter, then you can do the mile. And, if, and at the end of doing the mile, you can sit there and go, I wonder if I could do that 26 times. That's all the marathon is. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy, but it is that simple. 
And that's how you build into things. And so find small ways of giving yourself some successes. Organize your backpack. Fold up your blankets more. Make your bed in the morning. Clean your room. And then once you can clean your room, well, now you've got to keep it clean. So that's proving that you can maintain that kind of behavior that leads to success. So in the case here of finding the center within ourselves, well, we've got to find that strength within ourselves. We have to give ourselves that level of confidence. We have to find a way to do that. Because in the long run, he said, that's the best contribution that we can make to humanity. So now it begs this question, why would we want to, to do that? Why would we want to make a big contribution to humanity? Well, because if you're sensible, that's probably the only thing that you really want to do. Because as I've said before, you have the option every day when you wake up, you can, you can make the world a, a worse place. You know, that's easy for us to do. You can at least leave the world neutrally. Don't do better or worse. Just, you know, exist. But don't do good or evil. And you can also choose to make the world a better place. That's hard to do especially on a daily basis, because it takes a, a fidelity to, to positive characteristics. But, there's also nothing that's going to be more rewarding than leaving a positive, leaving a positive touch on, on the world. Yeah. So, first things first. Now, what if you can't, what, what if it isn't your, your interest to, to make a positive contribution to humanity? Fine. Narrow it down. Don't think so big as humanity. How about a positive contribution to your family? How about a co positive contribution to your friend group? Or how about a positive contribution to yourself that's going to, that's going to give, that's going to put your future family in a better place, as I've said. Um, I've asked before how many of us in this room want to have families someday, and it seems like overwhelmingly you guys want to have families. You guys want to have children and spouses and all those things someday. And if that's true, we understand that the decisions that you make today are going to propel you forward to a position that you're going to be in in five years, ten years, whatever. And the situation that you are in at that time is the situation into which you're going to be bringing your family. So if you put yourself, if you if you do well, if you develop these positive traits, and you find yourself in a really good position in ten years, then that's the situation into which your family is going to be born. And I wonder how many of us, if we really thought of it that way, would understand that maybe it would be a good thing. Maybe it would be a good thing to have our children born into the best possible situation. Do you want your children playing life on hard mode? You, know, you might not want it to be too easy, of course, because if you make it too easy, they don't, people don't develop. But you want it to be so damn hard. Think about your own life. I mean, I know, I know it's, it's fashionable to say, I wouldn't want to change anything all about my life because it's made me the person who I am today. And we all nod and we appreciate your, your level of self-love. But I wonder if anybody really believes that. Or would you like to actually have had some more advantages and opportunities? Because if you are that person who says, ah, oh, I love who I am, then I hope you're also not one of those people who complains about the opportunities that other people have that you don't. Because understand that the difference between the opportunities that you have and that somebody else has is exactly what we just praised. And I wouldn't change anything at all if it made me who I am today. It sounds like you would change some things so that you could have more opportunities. And we intuitively know that that, that would be a good thing and we'd probably like for our kids to have more opportunities as well. But understand that the job of, that the proper job of providing for a family, taking care of a family, of raising children, it doesn't start when, when the test comes back positive. At that point, for a lot of folks, it's, it's, it's late in the game. The test, the, the, the proper place to begin all of that is long before the positive test comes back. So that you're in a position where you don't go, oh crap, when there's a kid on the way. But you say, oh right, finally. But again, that begins long before. And I wonder if we thought about it that way, if we would make different decisions in our lives. Yeah. Perhaps. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques? <laughs>